welcome to lecture 4 here onwards i will give emphasis on the strategies of refractory composition design thank you all for the response and different level of queries on previous three lectures before briefing the concept of sintering microstructure and physical properties some basic features on raw material selection processing parameter optimization how to develop sop and some more critical points will be discussed we can start with magnesia carbon refractory for bof what would be the strategy strategies to select the raw materials for different zones one can visit site discuss and understand the application zone of refractories and still making operational features these are eight zones and demands different grade of magnesia carbon refractories and it depends on operational features like capacity lining detail pre heating schedule input composition tapping temperature lensing detail slag conditioning slag chemistry steel chemistry leftover thickness scanner facilities yes or no data collection schedule for machine learning life its etc point 2 collect the design and drawing of entire vessel and refractories from user end number 3 select the raw materials with details chemical analysis physical properties and xrd to complete users demands through discussion with refractory production team r&d and quality control team here in we can see different grade magnesia starting from dbm to fm and lcfm that is large crystal fused magnesia are required and composition can be optimized according to user demand for sometimes surface area measurement bet is required to predict the high temperature reactivity here on site is refractory unit it is being done in kiln and in situ that steel processing vessel other characterization of raw materials are also required for example viscosity and volatile content for resin etc use simple arithmetic to fix the batch composition in target of the desired properties in the perspective of application importance and economic viability composition need to be fixed followed by grading recycled material may be the another choice but it may change the refractory performance thus exhaustive lab trial is required to finalize the composition an extensive understanding on high temperature corrosion behavior and other relevant properties may facilitate to pick up the right composition discuss with production department to finalize the sop for the refractory manufacturing protocols how one can develop different alumina content refractories from available raw materials and facilitates to meet the specifications to answer that we have to follow certain steps first check the chemical composition of bricks and other properties perform the chemical analysis of available raw materials in your unit fix the composition and execute few trials to achieve desired physical and thermomechanical properties optimize the pressure and temperature from existing facilities here we can see high silica and alkali content facilitates lps that is liquid phase sintering and more deformation at low temperature compared to that high alumina content refractories and thus low rul this microstructure ensures the presence of secondary phase around the grain boundaries and easy slippage may happen under load thus 
synchronization of secondary phase through control over impurities are important. Particle size distribution has significant impact on densification and centering. Left side image indicates mono size particle and it demands different size fraction to fill up all voids. Rather right side we can see perfectly dense. If we consider the ternary mix and model we can get idea about packing fractions of coarse, medium and fines, but it may deviate for ceramic as it has relatively less sphericity and deformation capability. Thus high tap density through proper combination of coarse, intermediate and fines exp expedite desired properties. High dense coarse particles lead to high green density and higher percentage of smaller particles enhance densification rate. But too high fine percentage facilitate nucleation of micro cracks in lamination and low degree of mechanical response. While composition and grading optimized, we have to concentration, we have to concentrate on pressing load and sintering during firing temperature. Let us consider this figure, while green density is increasing with employed pressure, but decreasing after optimum pressure. It is due to the spring back effect. The reason behind spring back can be explained as spring back will be higher for a higher pressing pressure and when using granules of low moisture content. A body containing more of plate like particles will generally exhibit more elastic spring back and relatively more axial spring back that is anisotropic behavior. During rapid press the compressed air in pores can contribute a higher spring back. Pressure gradients can also cause differential spring back between regions in the brick. A larger apparent spring back will produce a larger stress in the brick lamination and load density. That means an optimum pressing load is required for particular dimension of brick. Followed by while firing is concerned, we have to think optimum temperature. The center density deduces beyond optimum temperature here. This is because of pore coarsening effect. Pore coarsening frequently observed during sintering is usually regarded as a consequence of pore migration with the grain boundaries. If we consider pore A and B, it gradually coarsening combines and develops C. With help of the given marker, we can measure the volume of pore A, B, C. Let us consider this is 0 0.33. With the same marker, we can get this is 0 0.55. So, point volume of pore A is this, B this, C this, where cumulative volume of pore A and B is lower than volume of pore C, it is 0 0.65. Thus, density will reduce because of 30 percent more pore volume.
eventually we can predict the sintering and expansion shrinkage behavior during firing through dilatometer. Ceramic has high hardness than metal and different particle geometries are prone to experience friction, abrade and stress. Thus, adaptation of any composition is not enough to get the product, rather judicious control over following facts are essential. These are particle morphology, applied load and dwell time, alteration of friction angle and shear stress by particles, interactive slippage over another. These are the responsible factors to control over the void ratio that is, that is that has influence on the densification. In uniaxial composition, dual friction causes shear stresses. The ratio of horizontal stress to vertical stress will be different. Here. In isostatic compression, refractory is enclosed in a thin impermeable membrane and compressed by a fluid, decrease in volume, but no shear and no distortion happens during compaction. That is all, all equal pressure is being employed. Firing eventually follows sintering, that is gradual elimination of organic bond and form formation of ceramic bonds. It may be in air or controlled atmosphere like argon, nitrogen or vacuum. Usually refractory bricks are firing in atmosphere. Coats and fine fractions have influence on the sintering temperature. For a quick reference, we can see finer particles sinter and can achieve density at a relatively low temperature than coarser. Moreover, hot pressed combination of temperature and pressure together expedite the sintering process at relatively low temperature. Then question is what is the driving force for sintering? The fundamental driving force for sintering is the reduction of internal interface surface energy. If we consider gamma is interface energy, A is in interface area, then cumulative we can split into two part where the densification is associated this part and coarsening is associated with this part. But in actually the sintering process follows simultaneous densification and coarsening. So, this is the result. So, densification is this one, coarsening is this one starting from these particles, but when combined this is the result. The interface can be a grain boundary or a surface, it is mat matter and atmosphere in interface. So, actually factors affecting sintering temperature, time duration, green density, uniformity of green density, atmosphere, impurities, size distribution and particle size. Let us consider two footpaths, one and two made of stones. In left side we can see only stones, small voids and boundaries. In right side secondary phases along with rough surfaces of stones. While system has more impurities, secondary phases will be prominent. During solid state sintering, the process provides sintered mass through diffusion assisted mechanism that results of grains, grain boundary and pores or voids. Whereas, LPS follows rearrangement, solution reprecipitation and densification. In obvious, low degree of thermomechanical response is observed in LPS, but it further depends on the type of phases present and can be confirmed by XRD. Rapid inspection of bulk density and apparent porosity assures the first stage quality control. The characterization should follow standard protocols. We can measure AP, BD, true porosity and theoretical density 
the theoretical density is actually considered as true density and can be obtained from XRD data. Some representative equations, formulas and methods are described here. Refractive density or porosity may amend or alter at surface temperature and strictly depends on the composition. Precious dimension is very important and certain parameters need to be considered like mold material and machining, firing shrinkage expansion or other defects, final finishing if any, machining for specific defectors like CCR, lining pattern in vessel etc. Here in few pictorial views have been represented where a perfect magnesia carbon brick can complete the working lining in which a definite backup lining made of LCC 70 has been installed. This is magnesia carbon, this is LCC 70. In slide gate system and ACN all should have perfect dimension to obtain hassle free steel production. We optimized the composition and process parameter through design of experiment in specific adaptation of response surface method. Herein we consider four input factors and five variables that is it was mandated to execute 5 to the power 4 that means 625 number of experiments just impossible task. But we adopted RSM and successfully optimized the composition and process parameters to obtain lowest grain size and highest density of zirconia toughened alumina based hip replacement. Thank you. Thank you for your presence.